has always been a huge draw for tourism. And even before COVID, we were starting to see the crowds getting bigger and bigger throughout the year. And now that we are post-pandemic, people are talking about revenge travel as if it were some sort of a blip, some sort of an anomaly that's just gonna happen this year, maybe next, and maybe will subside. You guys, I really don't think that the crowds are going to subside. This is Rome after all, and people wanna visit. We are blessed with a mild climate, and thanks to short haul flights from around Europe, people are now visiting Rome pretty much year round. And when most people visit Rome, especially for the first time, they wanna see all the must see sites like the Trevi Fountain, the Spanish Steps, the Sistine Chapel, the Colosseum. And if those are the sites you're planning to visit too, you're going to find them crowded. But there are some tricks. So without further ado, let's get into my top eight tips for avoiding the crowds in Rome. All right guys, before we get into it, go ahead and hit that like button consider subscribing, and if you do, don't forget to hit the bell so you know when I publish a new video. Tip number one, come in low season. Now I find that most people don't actually know what the seasons are in Rome. I find year after year, no matter how many times I talk about this, that many people think that fall and spring are shoulder seasons, and they think or they hope that things will be quieter in those months. In fact, spring and fall are the two absolute busiest times of year to visit Italy's art cities like Rome, Venice, and Florence. People often think that summer is high season because they assume that everybody is traveling on vacation in summer. Summer is definitely a busy time to visit Rome because you will find a lot of tourists here, but I think many people who visit Rome in the summer are here because they don't have a choice. They are tied in some way to a school calendar, and so they visit in summer, so yes. You will find a lot of people here in summer, but nothing like the crowds you will find in spring and fall. I always get pushback on this, you know, wait a minute, why? I thought this would be a good time to visit Rome. Exactly. Everybody thinks that, which is why it's so busy. So please take it from me, spring and fall are the absolute busiest times of year to visit Rome. And so you might think that winter would be a good time to visit Rome, but there are moments of the season when it is very, very crowded in Rome in winter. As you might have guessed, around the Christmas holidays and New Year's, it is very busy in Rome. So this lasts from around the 25th of December or so all the way through the 6th of January. Yes, the first week of January in Rome is extremely busy. First of all, you have the holdovers from New Year's, you have winter sales starting, you have the Epiphany on January 6th, celebrated here in Rome as the Bifana. So all the holiday stuff really goes through around the 6th of January, and only after that does it begin to subside. In Italy, December 8th is a big holiday. It's the Immaculate Conception. If it falls anywhere near a weekend, it will be very busy in Rome. And while February is definitely a winter month, we're starting to see more people coming in February. There's Valentine's Day, Carnival, and often you'll find Six Nations rugby matches, which brings a lot of people into Rome on the weekend that the matches are here in Rome. All right, now that I've told you when high season is, you're wondering, well, when is low season? When is it possibly gonna be quiet in Rome? I think you'll find that Rome gets a little bit quiet around the second or third week of November all the way through around the third week of December, with the exception of whatever weekend surrounds the 8th of December. Then again, from around January 7th till around mid-February, and that's kind of it. Yeah, we do not have a very long low season in Rome anymore, but there are those little pockets, so if you can come then, it's a great time to be in Rome. Yes, winter can be cold and a little gray and maybe sometimes rainy, but I think it's absolutely beautiful. I do love the light then, and like I said, it's quiet. You don't have to worry about how to dress to visit the sites. Artichokes are in season. There are just lots of reasons why I absolutely love Rome in winter. Number two, visit some of the less popular sites. I know you've come to Rome to see the must-sees like the Colosseum, the Vatican, the Trevi Fountain, but we have some amazing fountains, museums, churches, and other sites in Rome that are less popular and way less crowded. As an alternative to St. Peter's Basilica, you could visit one of the other three papal basilicas, St. Mary Major, Santa Maria Maggiore, St. Paul Outside the Walls, San Paolo Fuori le Mura, and the most important church of all, St. John in Lateran, San Giovanni in Laterano. So many of the churches in Rome are full of stunning art. So if it's art you're looking for, you can visit churches like Santa Maria del Popolo, Santa Maria Sopra Minerva, San Pietro in Vincoli, 
and the list goes on. If you check out my video about free things to see in Rome, you will find a wealth of information about some of these churches and the art you'll find inside. As for the Colosseum, I also did a video about other sites you can see in Rome that are from ancient Rome besides the Colosseum, and they are equally as amazing, in my opinion. For architectural grandeur, you have the Baths of Caracalla. For the history of Rome through its architecture, you have Castel Sant'Angelo. For ancient Rome, a whole city from ancient Rome, you can visit Ostia Antica, which is never crowded, even in high season. So you can check out that video for more ideas. Now, of course, you want to visit the Colosseum, but there are a few tips I can give you that will help you to avoid the crowds a little bit. I know this is a crazy suggestion, but you might consider visiting the Colosseum just from the outside. If you see it just from the outside, you're going to avoid the stress of all the crowds on the inside and the stress of worrying about which ticket to get, how to get the tickets, etc. Also, if you see it when it's not open, you can come early in the morning or late at night and you'll see it with way fewer people. I would suggest getting the Roman Forum Super Pass. This allows you to see the Roman Forum and the Palatine Hill, not the Colosseum, and you will see so much of ancient Rome, including a spectacular view of the Colosseum. And while the Roman Forum tends to be pretty crowded, I find the Palatine Hill is much less crowded. Also, because most tours cover the basics of the Roman Forum and maybe a little bit of the Palatine Hill, they do not go inside the super sites. So your Roman Forum super pass allows you access to the super sites. And if I may say so, visiting the super sites on the Palatine Hill may be one of the best ways that you can understand ancient Rome. In terms of museums, I think the number one visited museum here in Rome is the Vatican Museums. This is where the Sistine Chapel is. You want to see the Sistine Chapel, and yes, you're going to find it extremely crowded. But in a city like Rome, can you imagine that we only have one world-class museum? I think a favorite for a lot of people is the Galleria Borghese or the Borghese Gallery, and this is absolutely a wonderful museum. And you will find it much less crowded than the Vatican Museums because they have a limit on how many people can be inside at once. I think one of the most underrated and undervisited museums in Rome, which I would consider a must for any Rome lover, is the Capitoline Museums. The Capitoline Museums has it all. There's ancient Rome, there's art, it's huge, there are no crowds. It is a wonderful museum. If you're visiting on a weekend, if you're visiting on the free Sunday, you will find it very crowded, but during the week, you should be able to just walk right up, buy your tickets, and go in. The Galleria Doria Pamphili is another undervisited museum, and it is absolutely stunning and never crowded. I like to think of it as a little mini Versailles, but one of the best things about the Doria Pamphili Museum is the fact that it is home to three Caravaggio paintings, among many other masterpieces. And once again, it's a very undervisited and uncrowded museum. Another absolute jewel of a museum that I find most people don't even know about is Galleria Colonna. Palazzo Barberini is another undervisited and underrated museum here in Rome. You can see these stunning staircases designed by these two rival Baroque architects. Bernini and Borromini. And the museum is an absolute treasure trove of masterpieces by artists like Raphael, Caravaggio, Domenichino, and so many more. And you can bet that a city like Rome is full of archaeological museums. I've already mentioned the Capitoline Museums, but you also have Palazzo Altemps, the Baths of Diocletian, and Palazzo Massimo. All right, tip number three for avoiding the crowds is to go super early or super late. So let's start with the Colosseum. The Colosseum opens at nine and it closes an hour before sundown, which of course depends on the time of year. And you can expect the Colosseum to be pretty busy from 9 a.m. until they close. At the time I'm making this video for you, they've recently introduced an early hours tour. This tour goes between 7.30 and 9 a.m. and it allows you to take an elevator up to the third tier and offers you an amazing view of the Colosseum. Unfortunately, this is not a single entry ticket that you can book on Co-op Culture. You must book this as a guided tour. And it's not even a tour that Co-op Culture offers. You must book it through an outside tour company. So I've got links in the description below where you can book this early hours tour of the Colosseum. Many of you know that the Colosseum offers night tours and they do this pretty much year-round at this point. In winter they go less often, in summer they go quite a bit more often, 
The bottom line is that these tickets have become very difficult to come by, but I guarantee if you manage to get night tickets to the Colosseum, you will see it without any crowds. Many of you know that the Vatican Museums also offer early hour tours and late afternoon or after hour tours. So the Vatican Museums open at 9 a.m., but there are quite a few options for taking tours before this time. The very best of these tours is the Keymaster Tour. I did a video for you guys about this, and I absolutely cannot recommend this tour highly enough. It is amazing. This is where you start at 6 a.m. and you go around with the Keymaster and you literally open the museums and turn on the lights. The tour is a little pricey, also it's not that easy to get up at such an early hour, but in my opinion, it is worth it. Your group is the only group of 20 people inside the entire museums. Another option to avoid the crowds at the Vatican Museums is to take an early morning tour, not the Keymaster, but just a slightly before opening hours tour. This is not going to offer you exactly the same crowd-free experience as the Keymaster tour, but you should experience fewer crowds than you would during normal visiting hours. The Vatican Museums also offers some options for after-hour tours or late afternoon tours, and these are another way to avoid the crowds. With the extra time tour, you go close to closing time, and you'll be in the museums with other people, so it's not entirely crowd-free. But by the time you get to the Raphael rooms, and into the Sistine Chapel, it is a very uncrowded experience. Between April and late October, the Vatican Museums offers visits on Friday and Saturday nights, and if you go as late as possible on these evenings, you will find the Vatican Museums much less crowded. Tip number four for avoiding the crowds, take a day trip. Most places you can visit near Rome on a day trip are going to be much less crowded than Rome. The exceptions to this are Naples and Florence, which will both be very crowded when Rome is crowded. Some options for day trips from Rome that offer a much quieter experience than Rome include places like the beach, Ostia Antica, Tivoli, the gardens of Nympha, Orvieto, Assisi, and many other small towns nearby. I did a video for you guys about visiting small towns up on the Lazio coast, I can assure you that is a beautiful and uncrowded experience. Don't forget to check out my page on the website about more ideas for day trips from Rome. Tip number five for avoiding the crowds in Rome, get off the beaten path. One of the best ways to get away from the crush of people in Rome is to get off the main piazzas and streets. All around the historic center of Rome, you can find small, charming, less traveled, narrow streets often dotted with cafes, shops, and small fountains. For example, Campo di Fiori is a bustling hive of activity, morning, noon, and night. But it's actually a real Roman neighborhood. If you leave the main piazza and walk down some of the streets that branch off of it, you'll find plenty of ambiance and quiet. Tip number six, change your altitude. Yeah, that is a little bit of a play on words, what I mean is to go someplace with a view. Here are some places with views of Rome that are going to be much less crowded than what you find here at street level. Take the elevator to the top of the Altare della Patria or the Complesso Vittoriano, otherwise known as the wedding cake. No place in Rome offers such sweeping 360 degree views of Rome. I've been up there many times and it has never been crowded. Other places that offer wonderful views that are usually not that crowded include the Gianicolo, the Aventine, and the Pincio. Yes, sometimes the orange tree garden on the Aventine Hill is crowded, but in my video all about the Aventine Hill, I offer you some alternatives that are less crowded. Tip number seven, head underground. As you might imagine, Rome is full of things to see underground. And because space is usually restricted and often these sites are delicate, the number of visitors is usually restricted, which means you will have an uncrowded experience when you visit Rome underground. Some excellent underground sites you can visit in Rome, both to avoid the crowds, but also to experience ancient Rome, include the Domus Aurea, the Basilica of San Clemente, the Roman houses at Celio, and St. Peter's tomb. Tip number eight, visit a park. Rome is blessed with a lot of green space. These are parks and gardens that you can easily visit that are dotted around the city center and close to the sites. Some of the beautiful parks and gardens around Rome that you can visit to avoid the crowds include Villa Celimontana, where I'm sitting, the Rosetto Rose Garden when it's open, 
the Aventine Hill, as I mentioned, the Villa Borghese, the Doria Pamphili, and many more. So if you are visiting Rome in peak season, and your only choice is to be here for a two and a half day visit where you've got to pack in all of the must-see sites and you're going to be visiting the Colosseum and the Vatican during those middle of the day hours when it is going to be crowded, what can you do? The best thing you can do is to make a plan and know exactly what you want to visit. Then book in advance the Vatican and the Colosseum if you're planning to visit those two sites. If there are any other sites that are really important to you like the Domus Aurea, the Galleria Borghese, book those in advance as well. Plan in some downtime or some quiet time in between the sites. Make sure to visit the sites as comfortably as possible. Wear comfortable shoes, comfortable clothing, and bring a water bottle. And finally, you're just gonna have to accept the crowds and not worry about them too much. The best thing you can do is just to get into what I like to call my zen bubble and enjoy what you're seeing and what you're listening to if you're listening to an audio guide or a tour guide. And just enjoy Rome and don't worry too much about it. So what do you guys think? Do you think these are good tips for avoiding the crowds? Do you have any tips for avoiding the crowds? Leave them in the comments below. And if you're wondering when is the best time to visit Rome, check out my video right here.